Hi, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team, and in this video, I'll be going over the effects options that are available in Oxygen. The first effects option is going to be Animate on Scroll. To choose effects for our elements, we first need to choose the element. So for the Animate on Scroll example, I'll choose one of these boxes here. Then go to Advanced, Effects, and here's our list of available effects. Let's jump into Animate on Scroll. To enable animation for an element, check the Enable Animation box. If you've defined global animation settings under Manage Settings Global Styles, this is all you need to do. This element will inherit the global animation settings. But if you want to define an animation on a per element basis, we need to manipulate these animation settings in the properties pane for the element we want to change. So let's go over a few of the options that are available. To begin with, animation type is the type of animation that the element will use. So let's hit this drop down and let's go through a couple of these. Fade, fade left. There's some flip options, some slide options, and some zoom options. There are quite a few different animation types, so you should find everything you need here as far as animations. Next, the animation duration is the space of time over which the animation takes place. If we use a very small number, like 450 milliseconds, it's a very fast animation. But if we use a very large number, like 2800 milliseconds, it's a very slow animation, so you can adjust this to your liking and to the needs of your design. Next up is Anchor Placement. This setting defines which position of the element in relation to the viewport should trigger the animation. In most cases, leaving this blank is fine. This will result in the element waiting until it's in the viewport to start animating. But, for instance, we could choose Top Top, which will cause the animation to be triggered once the top of the element reaches the top of the viewport, as you can see there. So there are a lot of options available there as well, but the default is going to be fine for most cases. Animation easing defines the speed curve of the animation. For example, ease in out results in an animation that's much quicker at the beginning and the end and slower in the middle. So if we choose something like slide left, you can see it starts fast and then slows down as it reaches its destination. The animation trigger offset setting will allow you to define an offset of the animation trigger point in relation to the viewport scroll position in pixels. A positive value can be used to ensure the entire element is in the viewport before the animation is triggered, whereas a negative value could be used to trigger the animation before the element enters the viewport. So for example, let's choose top top as our anchor placement, which means it won't animate until the top of the element reaches the top of the viewport. And then let's add a 100 pixel trigger animation trigger offset here. And then let's scroll to see the effect. We've reached the normal trigger point and it hasn't triggered yet. But if we scroll down to 100 pixels, the offset then kicks in and the animation is triggered. So you can use a negative or a positive value to adjust when the animation is triggered in relation to the viewport position. Let's clear that out and now we'll talk about animation delay. This is the number of milliseconds that the animation will wait to start after being triggered. So let's set this to a thousand milliseconds and then let's scroll down to when the animation would normally be triggered. You can see that it waits a thousand milliseconds and then begins the animation. This is really useful if you were animating multiple elements and wanted them to be triggered at the same time, but to offset the animation start time a little bit so that you get kind of a cascading effect. The next setting we're going to talk about is the anchor setting. This setting is kind of complex, but it's very interesting and allows a lot of possibilities. By entering the ID of another element in the anchor field, you can trigger the animation of this element based on the position of the target element whose ID you've entered. So let's try to illustrate this. Right now you can see that this is set to animate when the top of the element reaches the top of the viewport. With a little bit of delay, let's get rid of that. 
So right now, without an anchor value, we scroll to the top and the animation starts. Now, what if we wanted to trigger this animation based on the position of another element? That's what we can do with the anchor field. So let's say we want to trigger the animation of this div when this heading reaches the top of the viewport. So let's grab the ID of the heading and let's go back to our div, advanced, effects, animate on scroll, and let's put a hashtag and then the ID of the heading in that field. And we've defined the anchor placement, which will also be used, but it's based on the position of this heading rather than the div that we're editing. So now if we scroll down, when this heading reaches the top of the viewport, the elements animation is triggered. Finally, we have the animate only once option. By default, once we scroll back up, the animation reverts and gets ready to fire again. But if we choose yes in the animation only once option, then it will only fire one time and then it will not reset once we scroll back up. So that's the animate on scroll effects options. Let's jump back to effects and take a look at opacity. Opacity is simply the transparency of an element. So to illustrate this better, let's jump up to say this image. Let's select the image, go to advanced, effects, opacity, and if we adjust it down, it becomes transparent. And if we adjust it up, it becomes opaque. Next is the mix blend mode dropdown. This determines how an element's content should blend with the content of the element's parent and the element's background. So let's go to advanced background and let's set a background color for this image, maybe red. And then let's set a background color for the section as well, just so we can see what's going on here. Let's choose like a blue color. Perfect. Now let's select the image and let's go to advanced effects, opacity, and mix blend mode. Now there's quite a few options, so we'll just go through a couple. You can see the effect here. It allows it to kind of blend with the background of the parent. Screen, overlay, color dodge. Now this image in particular has a white box around it. This would look much better if the image was actually cut out like a lot of uh, modern illustrations for websites are. Hue, that looks terrible. Let's move to something else. Color, there are a lot of uh, weird ones that you probably will never use, but there are, uh, there are there as options if you need them. So as you can see here, the mix blend mode allows you to manipulate the way the element blends with the parent element's background. Next, let's jump over to transition. So transition is a CSS property that allows you to cause a change in the element's properties to take place over a period of time. This is commonly used for hover effects. So let's jump down to something we can hover over uh, let's just choose this image and let's go to advanced effects transition and let's just pump the transition duration up to one second. Now, obviously, we're not going to see any change until we have some change that takes place. Now, again, the most common use of this is the hover effect. So we're going to have the image selected, go up to the state button near the top of the properties pane and choose hover. Now let's go back to opacity and let's change this element's opacity on hover to almost completely transparent. And then let's go back to the original state. So now you can see when we hover over the element, it transitions in transparency rather than just jumping to almost completely transparent. This is very helpful for menu items and links and anything that you want a much smoother transition for. Now, if we look at the other options that are available, these are all CSS options, and I'm not gonna go um, into a lot of detail, but these allow you to adjust the properties and the way that the transition takes place. Next, let's take a look at box shadow. So let's find a good element here. This one already has a shadow, but let's, let's choose this here. Um, this div and go to advanced effects box shadow 
And this allows us to add a drop shadow effect to elements in oxygen. So let's choose a color like black to make it very apparent. Then we can adjust the horizontal offset, the vertical offset, the amount of blur, and the amount of spread. So we could do something like a, uh, a very small spread, decent amount of blur, little bit of offset, and then change our shadow color to a more transparent color to make it a softer shadow effect. So there you can see a nice drop shadow effect that we've set up very quickly. Next, we're gonna look at the text shadow effects. So let's choose this heading here and go to advanced effects, text shadow. This is the same as box shadow, but it's for text. So let's select a color, change the offset, change the vertical offset, and change the blur. As you can see, we have the same controls. And it's very simple to set up an, a nice text shadow effect. The next one we're gonna look at is a filter effect. So let's add an image to this section. And I'll choose one I've already uploaded that'll make the effects a little bit more apparent. Um, so with an image selected, we'll go to Advanced Effects, and note that filters available for any element in Oxygen. It's just that images are the most common use case. So let's choose Filter, and Filter has a lot of different options like Blur. We can change the Blur amount, Brightness, Contrast, Grayscale, Hue Rotate, kind of a crazy effect. Invert. Saturate. And Sepia. Finally, let's jump back to effects and take a look at Transform. Transform allows us to manipulate the properties of an element in a lot of really interesting ways like skew, translate, rotate, rotate X, rotate Y, perspective, rotate 3D, and scale. Let's start with skew, the very simple skewing effect along the X or Y directions. We've also got translate, which actually changes the position of the element. And we've got Rotate, Rotate X, kind of a 3D rotation effect, Rotate Y, Perspective, which is kind of an interesting one because you won't actually see any effect until you actually add another transform which Oxygen does allow you to layer transforms, and you go to something like Rotate. So we've added some perspective, and we're going to rotate, uh, say, X here. And you can see there is a perspective effect for sure. Um, this is very dramatic for illustration purposes, but I'm, this can be used much more subtly for some really interesting effects. So let's jump back up here and look at Rotate 3D. This allows us to rotate um, along three different axes in 3D space. As you can see, it's kind of a rotating and flipping effect. And then the final transform is scale, which is really, it's just changing the size of the element. So one would be the normal size, two would be two times the size, so on and so forth. And you can scale it in the X, Y, or Z direction. So those are the effects options in Oxygen. Again, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team. Thank you for watching.